Hey guys, welcome to this video where we see how we modify the tic-tac-toe program so that the earlier game was against two players, now we change the code for have it against the computer. So I'm just going to run this and we'll see where we uh, stopped last time. So the tic-tac board was complete, uh, we can play between two users and uh, we ask both the players their names and then we can click on some of the boards and about five of we had five of the cells uh, allowed and we le left uh, rest of them for you to complete so while this comes up all right the play is here so if you press start game as you can see we can keep on playing and we also added the logics to predict how the game has ended now let's see what all we have to change. First we are asking uh, for both the players to enter the name. Now obviously this is not uh, required when we are playing against the computer because there is only one uh, outside player and we need the name. So let's modify this and call it name of player and let's remove this. We don't need all of this. All right, let's move slightly, move this slightly, let's do some adjustments here. Now you can select all of these together and move them up just to make sure our UI is looking a little pretty. So all that is gone. All right. Now in the tic-tac-toe board, this is where the, all the logic is mentored. Remember we are asking both the name of the player and player two so let's modify the constructor to only ask name of player one and we can call it player one we don't need to modify the variable names whichever is uh, suitable to you then also player two now the winning player name we can keep that but we know that it's only going to be player one but you know if the computer wins we can probably reuse this function so we will take a look at that so actually what we can do is uh, let's bring back player 2 and we'll set player 2 I mean technically tic-tac-toe is always between two players we'll just call it the computer so that anytime player 2 variable is needed we can say the computer wins alright now, also, this is the checkboard uh, which uh, returns if the game has ended. So we will still need this. We don't need this function is allowed move because if the move is not allowed, we can directly raise an exception here. So one thing we can do is um, basically um, move this function to a private function so that it's not accessible from outside this class and then when the player is updating the move we can check if is allowed move then continue or essentially we can uh, throw an exception if not allowed move so the symbol here is used to represent not so what this will do if the move is allowed and it returns true this will convert it to a false actually this takes row so the allowed move actually directly returns so we sorry we don't need a not operated there so what are the function parameters for allowed move row comma column if allowed move returns false oh, let's do this if allowed move returns false which means the move is illegal then we need to throw an exception but in this case it's not going to if we add a crow like this right throw new exception move is not allowed but here's a problem remember in a if condition only if this condition is true is it going to come to the next line so if allowed move is false it's not going to come here so that's why we need the not operator here so that it converts a false to a true so once is allowed move returns false which means the move is not allowed this condition will actually become true because of the not operator and then it's going to throw an exception else it's going to continue with the move 
all right so we made that change over there so let's go back into a form code so here we so what we should do we don't need this condition we can simplify the code here and actually replace this by a try catch and then we can just zoom uh, exception and then we can simply th show the exception message all right the ex dot message so this is the logic we need to change we also need to go back to the constructor where are we instantiating this to make sure that uh, we are only taking yeah main board is equal to null yeah this is where we are checking the board yeah this is where we are instantiating so i put a hard coded values here but you need to modify that and I am going to use this value, but again, you need to replace it with uh, whatever value is there in the text box. Now let's see if this logic is working. All right, start game. Now if I click here, it should be an illegal move. It should raise an exception. There we go. Sorry, exception move is not allowed. Probably should insert the same I colon here. This is not looking good. And the logic is working as before so we made these basic changes um, this is also called as refactoring the code because we are making the code a little bit better so as you can see the flow of the program is improved by adding that exception over there let's add a colon here all right so that essentially made some changes there but now let's look at the meat of the change which is how do we allow the computer to play the move so uh, recall most of the action where we update the board is happening in this function right so the player one makes a move again um, we will require player one to move and remember player one is the human player player two is the computer so we go down here if player one moves player one makes a zero if it's a player to move that's fine but let's come to this point is player one move is equal to not player one move this is how we toggle so what we can do is we can add a condition here if is player one move equal to false which means it's a player to move so now we have to add logic here change this to false is we need to find create a function get computer move let's add a function here so we call this function get computer move now every time we make a move we do need to know the row and column but remember the functions that we have uh, only return one specific parameter so what we need to do is create another simple class here which we'll just call it simple a uh, row and uh, column class now there are other ways of doing this but this probably will be the simplest way class uh, we'll call it row column this will be a very simple class it will just have two functions here we will call it public int row and a public int column and then we go back here we are going to create the instance of this class row column let me just call it rc is equal to get computer move so the computer move is going to return us the row and column and then we are going to call this function again get updated board so this is called a recursive function where a function calls itself but in this case we are only calling it on a, only on special cases when the computer has to move so then we will enter the row 
as rc.row rc.col all right now you're getting a red arrow because there is no function called get computer move so let's talk about creating this function so it has to return of a type row column get computer move all right so let's just create an empty row column class here uh, just like we did here rc is equal to new row column and just return rc so all the errors are going to go away obviously there will, won't be any values here and get updated board will only return zero and zero all right so let's with this change let's see if we can the computer will make them play automatically so let's start the game i did a move okay looks like oh uh this error is coming because we are trying to play in zero comma zero and computer is the only computer is going to make a move there so let's click somewhere else as you can see when we clicked over there though it should have been a zero for us so let's see what's going on there so let's add a breakpoint here let's see so start game all right this will get the updated board state uh, return board let's oh, let's continue okay now i make a move here so the row is zero column is one this is good if move is allowed if player one move is equal to true board is equal to x now is player one move it becomes player two move so now this person or the computer is going to move and obviously computer is going to return zero zero and we are going to call updated board as zero comma zero so this will go into updated board again move is allowed if player one move is equal to false board zero comma zero is equal to x and then we return the board so every time a user plays the computer also plays So let's run oops let's continue running here so if you look at the board state zero zero is x and zero one should be a zero this is how the use uh, move was played so we get the board value let's press oops i'm pressing on okay. Yep, so as you can see, we made this move here and the computer played the move over there. All right, so now let's go back into our logic of the computer move. We are doing nothing here, but this is where most of the sophistication of the computer move is going to be. And you have to make sure that you are not making any illegal move and there's a space available to you know uh, whatever move the computer plays there's a space available to actually make that move so we also have the check board class and technically this is how the computer move should be modeled so let's check this uh, let's copy this function here So the computer is going to try to make a draw. Now, again, there's several ways of doing this depending how sophisticated you want your logic to be. So let's see this. So first, let's say if, let's break this up into defensive moves. So we are going to try for a draw. So if board zero zero is equal to uh, O, which is the, players move so which means player has made this move 
and if board 00 is equal to 01 so clearly you need to put a stop because 00 means the top left row comma that's the same row which means the next one so there's a move here that is available that if you allow the user to play that user is going to win so what you need to do here is immediately set rc dot row is equal to let's call this uh, row will be zero and rc dot column is equal to one and then you return this value of rc so this is a defensive move similarly you can add this defensive moves for the second row and again you this all logic can be put inside a loop so let me show you how we go ahead and do this board one comma zero is equal to O. and if board one comma zero is equal to this which means you need to make another defensive move actually here sorry rc dot column should be equal to two and rc dot column should also be equal to two here so this is for each row all right so none so we have added two defensive moves but you will basically have to add a defensive move to check all rows and columns again this all can be done within a loop you don't have to write a condition like this for everything so now look, let's take a look at aggressive moves so here you are trying to win the computer is trying to win the game so none of these conditions were true so one thing you should always do try to get the corners if you have played tic-tac-toe the corners are the moves that you should be trying for if the corners are not available then try for the center board so let's see if the center board is available if board center board is equal to one one which is row one and column one is equal to blank which means then immediately take the board away or you can try for the corners also and then you return RC now re remember you're try returning RC so whichever move you define first it will take an order of priority for that all right now let's stop this and run we should have some moves here what's the error oops there are a bunch of errors actually let's remove this code we don't need this errors gone start game Just, oops let's make this all right so i am going to make a move here and you see because we defined the center board the computer took the center board away so let me stop this video in the next video i'm going to show you how we add some more qualifiers over there so the computer starts playing a little bit more aggressive moves